Do you know the origin of the new game mode in Dash? It's called the Swing, and many people think it was made by Rob Top. But Geometry Dash veterans know this thing has been terrorizing the lives of top players for over nine years. You see, before being officially released in Update 2.2, a GD creator somehow invented a way to make it work, but no one knows who he is. As a $2 block game historian, I can't let the inventor of something so awesome remain unknown. I must find the creator of the Swing Copter, no matter the cost. So first, I researched the origin of every other game mode. Perhaps I'll notice some clues that'll lead us to the OG Copter. Here's the cube, and of course it's a better version of the one in Impossible Game, no mystery there. Then there's the ship. Considering things like the roof, how it controls, and a platformer mode version being called a jetpack, this idea was definitely yoinked from Jetpack Joyride. This game was also arguably the origin of the gravity ball, robot, and the spider. Yeah, Barry Steak Fries is not happy. Interestingly though, there's two game modes which were apparently made by the GD community. And by GD community, I mean just Darnock. Most people think that the Dart is inspired by Darnock's level Wave Wave, but this level was inspired from a game called, you guessed it, Wave Wave. Game over. Yeah, the inspiration is so obvious that Robtop doesn't even bother calling it a dart. Our last hope is the UFO, which was inspired from the third oldest playable online level, Darnock's Gravity Field. Darnock must have played Polargeist and thought, wow, these yellow jump orbs are cool, how about I place them everywhere? It's not surprising that this gimmick was barely used. It didn't look great, and it used a ton of objects. However, Robtop saw its potential and turned it into a game mode. Although everyone calls it a UFO, it's actually called a bird in the game files. I wonder if there's a game with a bird that controls similarly to... Oh, right, Flappy Bird. Maybe Darnock wasn't inspired, but ever since Gravity Field, Flappy Bird went from obscure to viral. Robtop, with dollar signs in his eyes, saw this, caged the bird, and then took it to his lab for testing. Shortly after the release of the UFO, Flappy Bird's developer would delete his games from the App Store in fears that his games were becoming too addictive. I get that he's being nice, but come on, I could never get addicted to a game like Flappy. Interestingly though, aside from Flappy Bird, one of the games Dong Nguyen deleted was called Swing Copters. Oh, yeah, that's what we were talking about. These games are oddly similar. Both feature weird looking characters flying through objects straight out of Nintendo's early arcade games. The difference with this one is that when you click, you change directions. Sounds familiar, right? So that's where the weird name came from, but who created the first Swing Copter Geometry Dash level? Most people believe it's the infamously difficult Red Ward, which was uploaded by Sari on the 11th of October. While the version most people know was decorated by Neptune, there's technically an older, now deleted version with just Sari's infamous gameplay. These levels were made in Update 1.8, which added the Duo Portal. While this thing has a lot of interesting uses, especially nowadays, back in ancient times, Sari decided to combine it with a Gravity Ball Portal. The ball on top clicks on blue orbs, which flip the gravity of the ball on the bottom. Normally, the ball has to be on the floor to flip, but now, the balls can swing freely in the air. Now this was controversial. You see, Sari was the number one player, but he was also a fraud. Red World was so difficult that Sari needed cheats to complete it. Soon after he uploaded Red World, a ton of people started accusing him of cheating all of his accomplishments. He called them liars, got mad, and then proceeded to quit Geometry Dash. But on his way out, something weird happened to Red World. A coding error in the new 1.9 update turned this color slab into just a color block, meaning it was now impossible to get past 2%. Now, the only widespread playthrough of Red World was from Jack the Froster getting wrecked in practice mode. This video struck fear into the hearts of top players, and since no one could prove Red World was possible, the level, along with the Swing Copter, became infamous among the few who knew of it. For a few months, the Swing Copter remained relatively obscure, until a creator called Glitter Shroom used it for his part in a collaboration called Ultrasonic. This popular level swung the Swing Copter into stardom, and it gained a reputation as the most difficult game mode to learn. I mean, it makes sense, if you're doing all this to learn dry out, the gravity flipping every click is really gonna confuse you. Because of this, the swing copter is mainly used for extremely difficult levels. Even some top ones, like Yadagarasu, Plasma Pulse Finale, and Bloodlust. For the longest time, I believed Red World was first to do this. But Red World came out two months after the release of 1.8, so that's unlikely. Then, I realized something crazy. It's possible the swing copter's app wasn't the origin of the swing copter. Hear me out. Update 1.8 released two weeks before the this app, meaning within that small time frame, a Geometry Dash creator could have beaten Dong Nguyen to the punch. Just in case this wasn't true though, I decided to search the term Swing Copter and look at the oldest levels. Now, let's just say they didn't get it right the first few tries.
was. The ship and blue orbs combo felt janky and very annoying to play. The OG copter as we know it was uploaded by Sia Neon on September 15th. Unlike the others before him, he translated the app's gameplay in a fun and dynamic way which inspired other, more popular creators to make their own parts, and that's awesome, but was it actually him? There's still over 400,000 levels which could have invented the swing copter even earlier. I needed to check every one of these levels to find out the truth. Subscribe for my sanity. Okay, I'm not completely insane. Obviously, I don't have time for that, so I got Matthew AR and the Wily Master to make a bot that can scrape the server for levels with these three objects. The big issue is that there are many levels with these objects that have nothing to do with the swing copter, so there's still gonna be a ton of false flags. Although, at least this means we only have to search through a few thousand levels rather than a few hundred thousand. Anyways, while this was going on, I researched the butterfly game mode. It's pretty much a cube version of the swing copter. It generally has worse physics, and if you hold even a little too long, the icon at the top will hit the roof and die. Yeah, this is really annoying. I thought there was a shot this invention was older than the swing copter, but the first known butterfly level was newer than Sia Neon, so it's a false lead. Luckily though, it wouldn't take long for the program to be developed. After checking thousands of levels that were either unrelated or just portal spam, Matthew AR began to lose hope. However, eventually, he found one swing copter level older than Sia Neon's. This is in the dark. It was uploaded a few hours before Sia Neon's level, and in the middle of this map lies a small but possibly important swing copter part. The issue is that it's been updated five times, meaning it's almost certainly not the original swing copter, and this part was probably just an afterthought. But after several weeks, he might have found the one. This level was older than Sia Neon's map. In fact, it was even older than the actual swing copter's app. This could be it. The GD community might have finally invented an original game mode. Wait, Hexagon Force RM is on version 2. Its last update happened in 1.9, and the creator claims the final part was what was updated. We have no idea if version 1 contained a swing copter part. It's also very possible that the first actual swing copter level was deleted in one of Robtop's infamous server purges, where seemingly unimportant levels like everything I uploaded in 1.9 are wiped off the servers for storage space. Sia Neon built the oldest known functional swing copter with proof. His only account activity in the past 8 years is just two comments that sadly have zero likes. It's likely that he's an inactive player that's been hacked and he might not even realize how positive of an impact he's had on our community. This brings us back to update 2.2. Will the new swing entirely replace the OG copter? Well, as expected, most 2.2 levels would rather use a portal than some archaic mechanic, but I actually think that Sia Neon's invention still has a purpose. It seems that the UFO and swing copter tend to be people's least favorite game mode. In my experience, it's due to the lack of control I feel after clicking. It's pretty frustrating to float into some off-screen obstacle. That being said, I actually agree with Robtop's decision to make the swing floaty. It feels far more accessible than the dual ball version ever was, but that's the thing. High level demons don't need to worry about accessibility. Some top players actually still prefer the precision that the ball copter gives you. That's not all though. One of the biggest limits of the old swing copter was how little space it gave you to work with. But now with free fly, it has as much space as every other game mode, so we could potentially see some crazy ball copter parts in the future. Along with that, platformer mode prevents players from using the swing. Apparently, it's because Rob doesn't find it to be fun. I don't really get it, but I guess if you want to play something like the swing in platformer mode, you'll have to use that archaic dual ball setup that Sia Neon invented over nine years ago.